Hi, and welcome to Mods. We're keeping you connected to inspiring science with virtual camp discovery brought to you by Citrix, the museum's official innovation partner. Voyage Under the Sea. Today, we're talking coral reefs and why this vibrant ecosystem is so important to Florida. Hey, welcome back to the Mods YouTube channel. My name is Michael, this is... Brady. Also, Lance helping us out today with some of our animals that we'll meet in a few minutes. So today, we are going under the sea. Brady, living here in Florida, something that I love to do is go to the beach. And even though I'm 10 minutes out in the sun, I turn into a lobster. I know that lots of people love to go there. They just don't understand what really lies in the ocean other than just kind of getting in, you know, to the knees. So what kind of things can we find, I guess, right off our coast here? Yeah, so right off the Florida coast, uh, stretching from the Keys all the way up towards Cape Canaveral is a three-layered uh, coral reef that's actually one of the largest barrier reefs in the entire world. Coral reef. Coral, so coral is just hard stuff, right? Like really hard stuff? So coral is actually an animal. It's a type of animal that's related to a jellyfish. They are little microscopic organisms that colonize together and produce uh, these skeletons that uh, make these huge structures uh, that create uh, what we call a coral reef, a large habitat for lots of different animals. And on a coral reef, only the coral lives there? Uh, so the coral is basically the uh, foundational animal that uh, provides structure through its colonies uh, for thousands of different species. A coral reef is actually the most diverse ecosystem in the world, even more than a rainforest. And I'm looking at some of these examples here. So are, are they all just kind of like this white color? Like is that? Uh, so no, actually these are what we could maybe think of as like the skeleton of a coral, right? Okay. So these are the calcium base uh, rock type structures that are the the result of corals colonizing and producing this skeleton. And they can come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Uh, but basically what we want to look at is maybe in these uh, structures, you'll see these little tiny holes and these little tiny pockets. And in these pockets are where these jellyfish type creatures, which we call polyps, coral polyps, live. OK. And what do they eat? So, uh, it's a little complicated, right? Because a coral is really the relationship between the animal, the jellyfish type polyp animal, and a plant, a photosynthetic algae called zooxanthellae that lives within the fingers of the coral polyp. And that organism brings in energy from the sun through photosynthesis, while the coral polyp is a little animal that eats just whatever microscopic plankton and algae drifts by, uh, which helps clean up the water as well. Photosynthesis, is that kind of like when photosynthesize? Uh, well, I guess if you break down the word like that, uh, but it's really when a plant takes in energy from the sun uh -huh. and takes in carbon dioxide to produce oxygen and uh, it can result in some colorful things as well. So the colors that you see on a coral reef uh, in these coral structures is coming from that organism. Gotcha. And so the corals here on the Atlantic, are they the same as the one in the Pacific? Uh, so just like with anything else uh, throughout the world, you'll find kind of variations of similar animals, but they'll be a little different. So the coral reefs in the Pacific and Indian Oceans are going to look a little different than the coral reefs we have here. There's going to be different species of coral because there's a lot of different types of coral, just like there's a lot of different types of any other animal. And what's the largest animal I could find on the coral reef? Uh, so the top predator on a coral reef uh, is our different types of sharks, uh, typically smaller types of sharks like black tip sharks uh, that will cruise around and just kind of keep that uh, food chain within order because you have your coral polyps eating these little microscopic organisms, some other little fish eating some of the algae off of that, and then some bigger fish eating that, and then some sharks uh, eating those bigger fish. And so I see that we have different kinds of corals here. Mm -hmm. So what, what are like, what, what, what kind are these? So these are a type of coral. Now again, these are related animals, right? This is the structure of what we call a sea fan. And you'll find these typically like uh, on our barrier reefs here in Florida, uh, you'll find these typically like in between the layers of the barrier, kind of like they'll almost look like little trees and stuff uh, waving in the current. But they're actually corals as well. And how big is a coral when it starts? Like, I mean, is this just like, is this? Yeah, so coral starts as a type of plankton almost. It's a very microscopic uh, organism that will 
settle on a structure and settle in place and then eventually colonize and grow and it could take hundreds or even thousands of years to create a structure hundreds of even years? just like this. And for a whole reef to develop could take even thousands of years. That's absolutely crazy. So um, I know that we have some animals that we want to show our viewers mm -hmm. today. So I think we have them back here. So um, did you want to switch around and we can talk about these animals back here? So I know that you have brought some friends with you today. So I'm very excited to meet what you have. Yeah, so here's just a couple animals that will live uh, within different coral reefs. Lan, if you could pass us down here. All right, we're going to start with, uh, this is a pencil urchin. Now, a pencil urchin is a type of urchin, which is an echinoderm, some kind of like, uh, there's different types of these, and you'll see them with different uh, types of structures. Some of them look like really frilly, like a bunch of, almost like a koosh ball or something, you remember those it, things? Yeah. This one has more stiff, like branching uh, legs to it, and they'll basically kind of crawl along the rocks and suck up little like bugs and algae and stuff uh, through there cleaning up a lot of the uh, algae and, and mess off the coral reef uh, and providing food for some bigger predators, right? Uh, this specific type of urchin can be found uh, in the Caribbean Sea and in the regions around that, like up to the Carolinas and even over towards the Gulf of Mexico. So this is one that we'll find a lot on the coral reefs right off the coast here in Florida. Um, so that's one example of an urchin, yes. When you say chinodermata, yes. what does that mean? So that's a type of animal that has very spiny type structures all over it um, and is okay. very hard shelled and can, um, you know, really withstand a lot of durability and just kind of eats its way through. Here. Great. What else you got? This is an animal that lives in coral reefs uh, in the Pacific and Indian Oceans, but we have similar uh, creatures. This is a sea star and this is a chocolate chip sea star. Not a starfish? That's right, because these are not technically fish, right? Oh, okay. These are echinoderms. Got it. Oh, so they're also spiny skinned animals. Yes. Got but it. But not with the internal skeleton that a bony fish would have. So we don't technically call these a starfish. We call these a sea star, uh, known for their star shape. This one is a chocolate chip sea star because it kind of looks like it has chocolate chips on it. Yep. Um, and you can see this is also just a type of animal that will kind of take these little tiny uh, legs that it has up and down its spines here uh, and crawl just along the rock, just like the urchin will. And its mouth is here in the center and just kind of sucks stuff up out of the rocks, little bugs, uh, little algae, things like that. That's absolutely fantastic. So is it true that if a sea star loses its leg, it can grow it back? Uh, yeah, it is true. There's actually uh, theorize that there's a couple of species of what we call brittle stars that, in theory, if they were split completely down the center, may branch off into separate organisms. But it's very rare and kind of uh, mostly in theory. So we're going to put this guy back. So thank you for showing us the animals. I do have one last question, though. Yeah. Though we were taking them out of our touch tank, yes. but if I'm in the wild, should I be touching them or picking them up? So. Here at the museum, uh, we're trained to handle these here ourselves, but if you're out in the wild, especially on a coral reef, uh, a lot of the animals on a coral reef, especially the corals themselves, are uh, endangered or very threatened species uh, and, can, and are very sensitive to touch. So even just kind of touching a live coral can damage it uh, in ways that it will take hundreds of years to regenerate and heal itself. So it's good to just look with your eyes and uh, not really touch anything when you're on a coral reef in the wild. No touchy. All right, well, thank you for showing us everything. I think I've had a great time learning all about these cool animals. So we'll see everybody next time. Thank you for joining us. Whew, that was a hot episode. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Virtual Camp Discovery. Special thanks to Citrix, Mod's official innovation partner for powering this series. Please stay safe and connected with Mods by visiting our social channels at MODSFTL.